Hi guys, welcome to carbohydrates. So in terms of the specification, uh, we need to be aware of monosaccharides. We need to obviously recap on the condensation reaction that we were talking about in our previous video that uh, will take place between monosaccharides and form a covalent bond, which is called a glycosidic bond. So it's really important you remember those bonds. We, uh, you then need to know uh, three types of the disaccharides, so maltose, sucrose, and lactose. And what are they made from? So maltose to glucose, sucrose, glucose, and fructose, and finally lactose, glucose, and galactose. You need to also be aware of the iso uh, isomers. So we will be looking at alpha and beta glucose, and as you can spot here straight away, the difference is uh, in this OH or OH, which is on the bottom of uh, carbon number one for alpha glucose, but on the top of carbon number one for the beta glucose. Then uh, we will be looking at the polysaccharides. So main two that you need to be aware of is a glycogen and cellulose, and also of course starch. So we've got three of those. We also will be looking at the biochemical tests that are used to uh, identify uh, sugars in the solutions and uh, polysaccharides. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, here, obviously, as we've mentioned, you need to be aware of hydrolysis and condensation that we learned about in our first video. And those are the ones that will be following us for the whole section one. So monosaccharides, they are monomers from which larger carbohydrates are made and joined by glycosidic bond. So uh, it's a single monomer. The formula for the monosaccharides is C for carbon, H for hydrogen, 2, O for oxygen, and N is a number between 3 to 7. So for instance, okay, imagine N is at 6. Your formula of the monosaccharide will be C, 6, H, 12 or 6, which stands for uh, glucose. So uh, the, the characteristics of monosaccharides that are sweet testing, they are soluble. Examples are glucose, galactose and fructose. And we've got two main types that you will be learning about in your A-level. We've got hexoses. So those are the monosaccharides that contain six carbon, carbons and pentoses. So like deoxyribose and ribose, they will have five carbon sugar. Isomers then, uh, so uh, for glucose, okay, for example, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen atoms could be arranged in different ways. So as we can see here, what we've mentioned before, we've got, for example, alpha and beta glucose and the uh, bonding in between those uh, atoms is different. So that's isomers. So disaccharides then, obviously, they will be formed by condensation reaction. Condensation uh, reaction is the, um, is the joining of those two sugars together by removal of water to get the disaccharide. So we've got maltose, right, which is made of glucose and glucose minus water molecule, of course, sucrose, glucose, and fructose minus water, and lactose, glucose, and galactose minus water. The bond that it's uh, made in between, it's, uh, in between the monosaccharides, it's called a glycosidic bond, which is present here. Okay, so the main formula for disaccharides will start as, so we're adding those two together, so we've got in total 12 carbons. We are adding hydrogens, which is 24 for now, and we are adding uh, atoms of oxygen, which gives you 12. But remember, condensation reaction is a removal of water, so to make a bond. So in total, you're going to lose a molecule of water. So what we will uh, get in our disaccharide final uh, formula we will have C12 H22O11 and this is the main formula for disaccharides due to 
uh, fact that we're losing water to make a glycosidic pot. So uh, this is again to show you how the co uh, condensation reaction and hydrolysis will be taking place. So condensation, it's a removal of water, which we just did to make a glycosidic bond. And then hydrolysis is the addition of water to break this bond and to get our monosaccharides. So in terms of polysaccharides, there are, of course, polymers, so that are formed by combining together many monosaccharides molecules. In terms of them, they are large, so they will be insoluble. But in terms of being large and insoluble, they are good for storage, okay, like glycogen or structural support like cellulose. And the examples that we need to be aware of is glycogen, cellulose and starch. So uh, we will be looking at the polysaccharides in our next video, but here we will be looking at the tests for the reducing sugars. So all monosaccharides and some disaccharides like maltose are reducing sugars. What does that actually mean? So what is reduction? A reduction, remember, it's rig. So reduction is the gain of electrons or hydrogens and reducing sugars are the sugars that can donate electrons uh, to or reduce another chemicals so the test you're going to use uh, to, for the reducing sugars is a benedics benedics has uh, copper ions okay which are blue and they will be reduced to form a brick red uh, color in the solution so if they are uh, uh, here now uh, reduced, they're going to uh, gain. So, uh, so reduction is a gain of uh, obviously electrons and hydrogen. So here will be reduced to form the uh, color. So in terms of the Benedict test, you are going to uh, to use it uh, as adding the food sample, adding the Benedicts and heat. So make sure every time when they ask you how to use the benedics, you say you are adding the benedics and you heating the solution. Because without using that uh, word heat, you are not going to get max. So benedics on its own is obviously uh, blue. If uh, reducing uh, sugars are present, it's going to turn into red color. Red will be there when there is a huge uh, amount of the reducing uh, reducing sugars for any color between like green, yellow, orange, uh, brown, red will still give you positive results. So uh, here we've got a question that shows you the, um, the, the, the results of the Benedict test and it's called semi-quantitative. What does that actually mean? That means that based on those results, you can work out the concentration of the reducing sugars present in your sample. So the questions based on this are asking you to list the letters in the sequence of increasing amount of reducing sugars in the sample. So if you're looking at this, B is going to be best because it's green. So there is a really low concentration of reducing sugars. Then we're looking at the yellow color where it's a bit more. Uh, then we've got yellowish brown, so getting darker, so more sugars. Uh, then we've got dark brown, and finally the highest concentration of reducing sugars will be shown as red. Okay, so uh, explain those, uh, the, those results. So once all the copper sulfate has been reduced to copper one oxide, further amounts of reducing sugars cannot make a difference okay so this is really important so once you've added even so if you will add more and more and more it won't change the color because it's already been reduced okay in the first instance of the reaction so test for the non-reducing sugars it's quite similar but uh, what you're going to use you are going to firstly uh, hydrolyze the bonds using the HCl. 
because non-reducing sugars, obviously, like for example, sucrose, okay, they're not going to change the color only in the presence of benedics and heat, uh, 